What up, what up, what up, y'all? Welcome back, y'all, to another episode of Bad Girl Gone Goodish, where I stare. S- <laughs> what? I love the title. <laughs> Bad Girl Gone Goodish, where I share Ish. stories. <laughs> Goodish. Ish. <laughs> We're actually stories about the old me and the new me because it's not about being bad or good. It's about getting to know all the sides of ourselves along the way. So I'm so excited about this episode because guess who I have here? Who do you have here? (laughs) Who do I have here? I got Dominic in the building. What up, y'all? Famously known. To some. To some. (laughs) Yeah, as Manny as Spamboni, Manny Spamboni on, on the electric company yeah, that I, we did together. Isn't this crazy? This I know, is like, this is uh, like crazy. it's a reunion, but it's not because we live, live very close, close together. <laughs> um, but yeah, hey, what up? what's Hi, up? Chilling, oh you know, aquí en la lucha, ya tú sabes. That means here in the war is. Yeah, 2023, wrapping it up. I know. It's been crazy this year. It's been year. crazy. We spoke about this, and it's like... We alive. <laughs> we alive. We alive. We made it through. We alive. And I think... Um, yeah, I feel like that'll be a theme of this episode. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, we've known... I've known you since you were, what, nine years old, ten years old? How did we meet? Even, uh, we met... I saw you performing. We were performing together... Um, it was like at a World AIDS Day event. That's what it was. We were you were at a World Day event, AIDS Day event, um, at Montefiore Hospital, and you were rapping. And I had already seen you. I want to say on MTV, but I knew I knew Gabe. You knew Gabe. I knew Gabe, and Gabe was shooting for your doc. Yeah, I it. like that was the friend. I was like, oh, yeah. and that's how we met. I didn't know you knew Gabe. Yeah, because Gabe, remember chronologically how it all worked out. Uh, on the outs, Gabe, yeah. Right. So I knew outs. Gabe from On the Outs, which was a uh, amazing independent movie. Um, which if you haven't seen, you got to see. It's, it's like a hood cult classic. Um, so Gabe was the AD on that, and we shot that. It's crazy. We shot that twenty years ago. Um, yeah, we shot wow. that twenty years ago, and it was like right around that time where I want to say like I met you because it was just like oh yeah, and then that. Mm-hmm. I saw Gabe. I was like, "Oh, what you doing here?" He's like, "Yeah, I'm doing." I was like, "Oh, I know her, uh, ish." And but that was like when we officially met, and then a few years later, that's um, when we we shot Electric Company. We we shot Electric Company, which is crazy, crazy full circle. Yeah, full circle. I mean, what was that? 2008. What's the math on that? That 15, was 2008. Because I did. Were you in the pilot? I was not in the original. No, I wasn't in okay. because I know y'all shot the that. The pilot with. was in 2008. So so then it, it, that the turnaround oh, t- on that was quick. Maybe 2007. No, the pilot 2007. was 2007. Yeah, because 2008 we shot. We 2008. Shot. Yes. Yeah. So 2007 was the pilot. Yeah. It was the summer of 2007. Yeah. 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 That was crazy. Yeah. And so then there, it was like right away. Yeah. It and got the pilot up. was done with Lynn and all the and like all the yeah, freestyle Lynn, love supreme. Le, freestyle love supreme was just in the pilot. Yeah, it was freestyle. a freestyle love supreme and pilot. Me. And then just <laughs> randomly I showed up. Yeah, <laughs> and, and that's then they it. reworked it and you know, that's how I became involved and, yeah. and got cast. I um, remember our first um interaction for our table reading. Oh my god, what was it? <laughs> I'm horrified. It was, I saw you and I remember knowing you. So I was and like, I remember you gravitated towards me. Yeah, like I that gravitated whole, yeah. You, towards you. And I was like, girl, this breast thing. <laughs> no, 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 no. That used to be a thing. I was like, girl, your breast thing. Um, and part, then, yeah. Well, and shooting, you know, you're around each other a lot in early hours. In early hours. And, <laughs> you know, we tease each other. We We were a family. We were a family. We were, I mean, yeah. we still are. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I remember our first interaction and it was so mean i was mean or you were mean i was mean oh i'm sure yeah <laughs> well, what did you do i don't know i think I, I was like oh you big or something i mean you would always punch me in my stomach so oh, fyi yes. i you would know. punch you in the stomach yeah so if if you didn't know if you didn't if you didn't watch and where were you if you weren't watching election company in 2000 um I, yeah i was much bigger at the time i was yeah, yeah i lost about you know uh, almost 200 pounds. Wow, congrats, so, man. Thank you, you know. Um, that was a journey. That my, was a it's, journey. I mean, it's been a journey for, what, the past however many years? Like, we've been, yeah. yeah. So, um, and I think that's what makes this show beautiful. It's just like, you know, 
I think when you, you know, are on a TV show or whatever, um, you kind of live in a time capsule. Oh my gosh. And people like just, I mean, you know this more than anyone. Like people will always expect you to be, you know, 10, 11 years old, however you were. Yeah. Um, so it's like they know you from that period and they don't realize like, one, how much life was going on at that time behind the scenes and then what life is like in the in between in the now however 15 many years since it's passed and like the fact that you can still put it on and enjoy those episodes yeah yeah and we're like fully realized yeah. human beings like yeah. the majority of like the cast have kids and like I have know. Lived, oh, yeah which is wild i know um, it is crazy i mean that was a time i feel like for a lot of us um that it was like a pivotal moment for everyone's career. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, career and or just like your journey and like the human experience. Like, yeah. um, uh, you know, for me, um, how did you get cast? I got cast. I always say this. I give props to Tommy Kale, to Thomas Kale. Tommy, shout out to Tommy. Shout out to Tommy, director of Hamilton, and like now. TV film director, direct, uh, Broadway director. Uh, I had done a play reading with Tommy, where Tommy cast me. Um, and I remember having to do a whole bunch of different parts. Um, and a few weeks later, Tommy recommended me to the casting. Because Tommy was also the director of Freestyle Love Supreme. Mm -hmm. So Tommy, I guess, recommended me to casting. I came in to audition. Um, and Manny, at the time was called Cyrus the Virus. No. Yeah, but I guess they probably couldn't use that because of uh, Con Air or whatever. I don't know. But I remember the character was Cyrus. Um, and I auditioned for that. And, like, I want to say it was in the audition where, like, it said, like, laugh maniacally or whatever. Yeah. And then that's when I came up with that that Manny laugh that what, what, stuck. What, what's the laugh? I don't even, girl, I don't even know how I that. <laughs> Please do no, it. Hold on, let me see. <laughs> It was like Evil oh. Elmo. I think that's why it was just like, I was evil like, oh. Elmo. I think that was my inspiration for it. Um, yeah, and then I ended up getting cast. And, um, you know, it was just really beautiful. It was a really weird, beautiful, complex time um, doing all that. Um, so my best friend, Robin De Jesus, shout out to Robin, um, was in In the Heights. And that mm -hmm. was at the same... So we were shooting Electric Company yep. and In the Heights was at, at the, the same, same time. time. And then, like, we shared key cast members like Chris Jackson, yeah. Bill Sherman. Uh, so Chris Jackson was in the original company of Heights. He played Benny. Mm -hmm. And Bill Sherman did the orchestration for Heights. Also worked on our show, show. doing the music. So there was always this intersection of In the Heights and and, and, and they were writing, and, and Lin Manuel and Chris, they and were then, writing for the Electric Company. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It was songs. all this like, yeah. it was this weird, like, incestuous thing. Yeah. Where it was just like, you know, and then, like, there were so many ties. Like, Robin was my best friend. I grew up with Veronica, ja with Veronica Jackson, Chris's wife. Yeah. And, like, like, I remember sometimes, like, on Saturdays, I would, like, be at the theater all day just to, like, hang out and see my best friend. But then, like, you know, and see Chris and be like, he'll be like, you here? <laughs> and then like, he'd hand us a song at a read through, you know? Yeah. Those infamous electric company songs. Yeah. Yeah. What was your favorite? Of what? Of the songs. Um, I have, I have a lot of favorites. Um, I think everyone loved the Silent E's and Ninja because that it was such a, <laughs> it was such a classic. I mean, the way that Lynn delivered it, and it, the way that it was written, and just the whole thing, I felt like it was. I don't know. It was so brilliant. It was. It was brilliant. I, I will tell you this. Um, remember when we started doing our live tours and whatever? Oh yes. And I had to perform that. That was scary because it was just like, oh yeah. Yeah. You were scared? I I mean, I was, yeah, I was scared because I wasn't a rapper. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't a rapper. I wasn't necessarily a singer. Um, You know, I identified primarily as an actor. So it was just one of those things where it's just like, Lynn made this song famous. Yes. <laughs> and then I had to like, do it. Do it. And, yeah. Um, But it was dope. I mean, I love touring. Did you love touring? I... Liked it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> what was your experience? For those of you who don't know, um, 
uh after the show started airing we we got to tour and we toured a yeah. lot we went to a lot of different places i think we even performed at the white house i didn't y'all did oh yeah okay. cause they, like I, for whatever reason the pranksters always like got some shade i don't know so they would be like okay you get to do this one you get to do this one so we weren't ever like kind of like the episodes like okay there were very few episodes where four of us were on together okay it would be like one and oh, sorry one and, eh, one <laughs> One and two, or whatever. But I got to do the good ones. Okay. I got to do. I did Turks and Caicos. You did Turks and Caicos, which was everything. Did you do Tribeca with us? Uh, yeah, I did. Well, Tribeca Tribeca was when you launched your documentary. That was when I launched documentary. I did my performance, and then we. Oh no, we did. Electric Company. Do they know about the documentary? What? About Peace Star Rising? Peace Star Rising. I mentioned Peace Star Rising okay, um, in, a, in, a, in a season, in an episode already. Well, just in case they haven't heard, Peace Star Rising is an amazing documentary about Peace's life. Um, and you know shit is real. Are we allowed to curse? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You don't know shit is real. If you, got a, uh, <laughs> if you got a documentary about your life at 14 years old, it's like, <laughs> shit was a wrap. <laughs> If you talking about how hard your life was at 14 years old, you know shit is gangsta. <laughs> Yo, it was gangsta. It's true. The craziest thing about that documentary, and I mentioned this before, is that there is so much footage that wasn't. Yeah, um, I can imagine. That wasn't made into the actual film. Mm-hmm. Like they had so many different ways they could have made a story, you mm-hmm. know, with all of the film that they had. And so, like, there's so much of it that's like, I have to even go, th- I haven't mm. even gone through the archives of it. Mm. So I haven't even seen what it is like. Is there but... one thing that you remember that didn't make it that you wish would have made it? Um, That I remember? I think there were several. I, I really wish they, they would see the actual fights that I would get in with my dad. Mm. Like me and my dad will go off. Mm. You know, and it never led to anything physical because <laughs> it was filmed. <laughs> but but you would still see the tension, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, of me and him. And it was just like, and you could tell, like, I was in those moments, I remember feeling like I was crying for help. Like, listen mm. to me. Somebody got to listen to me. and Nobody wants to listen to me. Mm. So I felt like that was a, a prominent, like, thing that I never got showcased that never got showcased on that Mm. so and that's hard you know especially as a young person not feeling like you have a voice yeah um when you're paid for people to hear your voice right as a as a as a as a mc exactly as an actor or singer yeah um i remember you know working with you when you were younger and just having such a profound respect um hmm. because you know on any tv show um i feel like the culture is always created by the lead by the number 1 and in this case the number 1 was you know a kid <laughs> 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 or two kid yeah it was you if i remember correctly it was like you you were number 1 ricky was number 2 josh was number 3 on the call sheet you know um i thought josh was number 1 was he I Maybe, remember. I, but I think regardless. in the beginning, for sure, Josh was number one. Really? Or I, I could be wrong. I mean, regardless, yeah. it was your show. Yeah. Every like it was your show. Yeah. Um, and because of that, we got to. Um, I mean, we got to interact probably more than anybody. Like yeah. on the yeah, it was, and there was just this this chemistry there. Um, um, but you know, for being so young and having. To have so much on your back. And I'm, I think this is probably also a new, um, what your life was like outside of the show too. Right. So it was just like, you know, she's she's doing it. Yeah. It's funny because a lot of people don't know how, I was still struggling a lot during those times. Mm-hmm. Um, especially like season one, I was having a really hard time. There was a lot behind the scenes that was happening at home mm-hmm. that I kind of had to put a facade up. And I almost felt like I leaned on a lot with the cast members and the crew members on the electric company mm. because I didn't have a safe 
I didn't feel like I had a safe space elsewhere. Mm. So when I would go, go on set, I felt like I had some sort of a safe space um, mm-hmm. because of how just family oriented the set was, which it, is such a blessing. Yeah. Well, I mean, we were very much a family. I will say this, like, yeah. you know, I still keep in contact with the majority of like of us. We're still yeah. pretty tight and it's always like the text or whatever. But I think um, we, I mean, I was going through stuff too, you know what I'm saying? And I, you know, that I felt like I, um, you know, couldn't really share. I mean, we had, we were on a public, you know, television show and like had to be these clean versions of ourselves and 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 you you ricky were children but we were all grown-ass people <laughs> like for real, we were old y'all <laughs> like all of us like i was low-key like in my 30s yeah you know playing many um and we were all around that at least the pranksters were all around yeah. that age um you know so having to present like everything's okay, you know. Um, wasn't easy as an adult, so I can't even imagine what it was like as a child. Yeah, no. For uh, for at least for me, if you saying that I was the star of the show or like number one or whatever, it it definitely felt like the pressure was on for me a lot because of the baggage that I came with. Mm-hmm. I don't want to say baggage, but like. Um, not having to read and then like know how to read but then i was on a show that was about, about reading yeah. and so there was this like pressure to make sure that i was learning how to read mm. on this show um and i always had mixed feelings about that i'm not gonna lie talk about it i don't know like what do you mean <laughs> um one first i'm more grateful than anything because it was because of this show that I did learn how to read. Mm. And it was through the resources, especially um, the advocacy that Karen put pulled, pulled through and my dad mm-hmm. to make sure that, you know, my my education was held as like the primary standard. Mm-hmm. So if I wasn't on set, I was always, always yeah. tutoring. And even if I wasn't called to be on set that day, I would still come on set just to tutor. Mm-hmm. So it was definitely held to a high standard to make sure that I was, you know, getting the education that I needed. Um, But I also felt like some sort of, and I didn't know about this until Mm. later, but I felt it of like some sort of tokenism kind of. Really? Yeah. Wow. Because it would, it would, they would leverage this, especially during the live shows Mm. of like, who look at this person who looks just like you, looks like just like the audience that's going to be watching this, that learned how to read through this show. What, wow, wow, that was said during promo. I thought that was just like a low key behind the things with no, us. No, that was said on wow. stage and that was like promoted as PR and like all the things, did a whole TED talk. Wow. But I mean, and it, again, there was good points to it because at the end of the day, we were we were trying to raise awareness around the mm-hmm. epidemic with literacy and and especially how children, you know, that don't come from, you know, great social economic backgrounds or children of color are, are reading at a lower grade level. Mm-hmm. There is that is real. And there was there was there was um, somebody needed to talk about it. And they used me as this like advocate individual to be able to talk about it but i never felt like i was an advocate i felt Mm. like i was uh what do you call it not a guinea pig but i just like this sense of tokenism almost Mm. well i think you know it sounds like it wasn't done and correct me if i'm wrong with like your permission like they just kind of put you out there to be that and i think that's is that fair yeah i think that that's what it i think that that's what it was and it wasn't like i really had a choice and that that's that's the key right there yeah is the fact that if they took away that voice and then you have to be a voice of something that's you know that doesn't always feel good especially as you know a young person i think um props to you because there is a there is a positive of it in a sense where like you became a model for I so did. many and I that did. is 
that is beautiful. And like that was one of the things I'm most proud of with the show is when people are like, yo, I learned English from watching your show. I learned how to read. And I learned yeah. how to read, actually. Yeah. I did. Yeah. So But two things can be true at the same time. Exactly. You know, yes, it is a blessing. Yes, you had the resources there and the support. And, you know, your voice could have been taken away. And yeah. that's unfortunate. And I'm sorry that that happened to you. Yeah. But I mean, um, it's it was, again, a learning experience. And it did get me to experience travel a lot, experience a lot of mm -hmm. things, meet a lot of new people. I did became this peep, this person that was like, oh, my God, like there's a girl on TV that looks like me and mm -hmm. she's going through the same thing I'm going through or whatever. And that is that says a lot. But I think for someone at my age at that time, I really couldn't I really couldn't um, comprehend that. Mm. And I really and be primarily because I felt this ickiness of it, like mm. like feeling fraud, feeling like okay, let's just put her out there so that the world can see see this show is working because it works with our main cast member, mm. you know. Mm. And so and I just I don't know it felt icky. Yeah. Um. But I'm still grateful and yeah. you know and you know Karen Fowler shout out to her she executive producer of the show she was one of the biggest um individuals that believed in me like mm. at least out of everything i felt like she was the one that was um always wanted to make sure that i got the best chance mm. um and so maybe that meant hey i'm gonna put you out there because this is what you need and, yeah, but know. I mean, but that could still be foul, <laughs> fouler, <laughs> I don't know. and no shade, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But again, it could, you know, um, it was a different time. People weren't talking about, people weren't as aware, um, you know. And it wasn't, it wasn't like, um, Electric Comedy was ahead of its time. This show we were, and that's why the was shit ahead of its still time. Still holds up today. You could yes. put that there, but minus the phones, minus, minus the phones, <laughs> so, yeah. Right. You it like, was yeah. ahead of its time. Like I look at TV shows now, children's TV shows, TV shows on Disney now, mm -hmm. and all these different things doing the things that we yeah. did. Yeah, that wasn't a thing. Like, and I would, and I know this because I would go to auditions to audition for for Disney. Yeah, to audition for thing for roles. I was auditioning for uh, Wizards of Waverly Place yeah, that yeah, Selena yeah. Gomez got, mm. and they wanted me to sing. So I sang whatever, and I did it. But I would come in as a rapper. And my dad was like advocating, no, but she can do the rapping and this. And Disney was not about mm. it. Disney was not about the rapping thing. Now, you go on every freaking like, show, every this some rapper rapping. rapping. It's because of Hamilton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone like, ooh, they can rap. But you know what's meant to be yours will be yours. Yeah. And I think, you know, your DMs stay popping. You know, right. with, it's you true. Know. And I think there's something about like that show that we did, like, you know, we were predominantly people of color, like right. down. You know what I'm saying? Right. Even the ones that didn't look like people of color look <laughs> like, like Josh. Ambiguous, you in know, some kind of way. All vague. Yeah, no, no, yeah. no, but But Josh um, was Puerto Rican. So. Josh is mad Puerto Rican. Mad Boricua. Josh is mad Puerto Rican. Shout out to Josh again. Yeah. Um and it's just it's so beautiful, like when you think about, you know. Just the journey, and even in those those hard moments, um, that's a part of who we are, who we come to be today. Yeah. You know, um, like for me, like shooting that wasn't easy for me. Like, um, uh, for those of you who don't know out there, um, you know, in addition to be being an actor and a writer. Um, and producers, right? Like I have a lot of hats. Uh, you know, I'm also an advocate too. You know, um, specifically around HIV. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm HIV positive. I've been HIV positive for 18 years. I'm wow. going on 19. So I was very early in my discovery of my status when I was shooting the show, and I was very closeted about it. Like my mother didn't know. Like I was, you know, very few people know. You yeah. know, so I was just I was very conscious of that and having again to be this representation of a certain thing on a kid show meanwhile there's this huge thing in my life that i wasn't really talking about wow. um like i remember um wow I've, i don't think i've ever spoken about this um i remember having an allergic reaction to medication 
while we were shooting Mighty Bright Night. And what? I had a rash all over my body. Yeah, I had a rash all over my body, which is why it was fucking, it was so hot. And I'm wearing a hoodie. <gasps> yeah. And, and like, I think it was one of the few days where I was supposed to shoot where something got rearranged because I literally couldn't come in because I had a fucking rash all over my body. Um, and it was one of those things where I was like, oh, I got eczema or like I made up some random excuse or something. Yeah. And it was allergic reaction to your medication. So medication. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I was a gangster. I did not like during that time. It was, you know, what, what was what was um, if you don't mind me asking, what about what was your decision to kind of just dis- not disclose that? To not disclose that uh, stigma, the fact that we, you know, were kind of one. It just I wasn't ready. Yeah. You know, I, I it was a different time. I wasn't comfortable with myself. I think, you know. Growing up at the time that I did, you know, you know, the, I mean, for all intents, it was considered a death sentence. So I think yeah. when you internalize stuff like that at such an early age, even if it isn't true, I, you know, I talk about it a lot in, in my own work that it poisons, you know, on a psychological level. Like you internalize feeling not good enough, feeling shame, feeling, you know. Um, and I had a lot of that within me at the time. Mm. And then having to then pretend <laughs> and be everything okay and be put on that 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 phase of Manny Spamboni or whatever it was that I was doing at the time um, was challenging. Yeah. But I was doing my best in order to kind of get through it. And it wasn't until um, years later where I really started to feel the negative effects of not saying anything, of not Mm -hmm. taking care of myself on a psychological, spiritual, and emotional level. Um, And when I began to do that, you know, my life changed for the better, you know, and I changed for the better, Um, you know. And, you know, I remember being at an electric company and being like I couldn't. The only person who, who knew... And I want to say they didn't even know till later was Josh. Oh wow! Josh was the only person I told. Wow. Yeah. Um, and I don't remember why, but it, you know, um, and Josh was very supportive. Like you know, we were a family. You yeah. know, and I think, um, yeah, I just I. Like, people who were there for you, you know what I'm saying? Because I remember the love that you got. Like, there was there was something between all of us. But particularly, I want to say, like, me, you, Josh, Ricky, Shock. Yeah. That was just, like, we were very tight. And I was, like, we no tight. matter what we were going through, whether you were struggling in school or, or personally or whatever, like, we had you, you know. Um, and, you know, in that same way, you may not have known what was happening like kind of behind the scenes in my life, but I think, you know, we provided a a space of safety Mm -hmm. and I know for facts, we didn't come from spaces of safety, like in our own lives. So I think, you know, the fact that we were able to do that for each other on this show um, was really, really beautiful. And it's something that I always go back to. And it's one of the reasons why I'm so proud of it, you know? Yeah. I do feel I do feel the same way. I do feel that there was this sense of family. I felt brother, like a brotherhood, like brothers I never had mm-hmm. with you and Josh. Um, and then eventually Ricky. It took a while for Ricky to get there for me. Ricky was a dick. Ricky, Ricky were, I love Ricky. Ricky was an but asshole. But Ricky was like, Ricky would be online. And online was like, like looking at houses to buy and like. <laughs> I'm like, first of all, we're on PBS. We ain't making no money. But Ricky was Ricky had been. Yeah. What was crazy is Ricky had been working the longest out of anybody professionally at that time. Oh my god! Because he had been on Broadway, Broadway run like a couple Lion times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my man was, you know, trying to invest in real estate. But at, he <laughs> was, he was, he. It took a while, and he apologized about this, and we had a whole talk eventually mm-hmm. about it. But in in during that time, it he was the hardest. Um, he was a bully. Mm. Ricky was a bully. Damn, he not he here knew. to defend himself, P. Like, no, no. <laughs> but because he knows I love him. First we of all, are, there's nothing but I love. I love him, yeah. and we spoke about this already. 
So he knows this. We've spoke about it. He's apologized, and we 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 kind of hash that out. And you know, his family is, it has a big place in my heart, mm-hmm. anyway. So you know, he he already knows what it is. But he was a bully. Yeah, and I mean, the reality yeah. was because I always felt like I really felt dumb a mm. lot of the times on set. Like y'all would all talk about things and talk like in like code sometimes, and it would take me a while to kind of understand. Like you had to have. Not only like an emotional, I like you know EQ or whatever, what whatever that's called, but like we you were had 30. to like, yeah, but <laughs> we, we were thirty, but but, but yeah. Ricky got it because Ricky was thirty <laughs> in a fifteen year old body. Ricky was but, an old ass man, but I I felt so dumb all the time, and he would like, like he would press on it, like mm. oh you don't know that word, oh well this and this and that, and like and he would, yeah, that and was he was him being very a dick. extra, that he was him such being a dick. dick, yeah, because I mean. Because he came from, like, prep school world ish, right? Like, didn't he go to, like, a fancy school or some shit? Did he? I want to say. He always felt like he did. I don't know. Maybe it's because he kind of talked like this <laughs> 11 years old. It's like, you Dominican, Papa. <laughs> right. I know, right? I know. Oh, my gosh. Like, it was so was funny your... because... And he didn't know Spanish. Did he know Spanish? None of it was... He didn't know Spanish, but his mom would be on set all the time. I live for her. And, oh, my God, that woman may she... <sighs> God bless her soul. I love her so much. She um, she was always a sweetheart to me. Mm-hmm. And she would always be like, Priscilla, if you need anything, you can always come by. Mm-hmm. And, we'll, and Donald as well, um, uh, her husband. And just, oh, and if you ever guys need anything. And I grew a lot of a, a good uh, relationship mm-hmm. with them. Um, so, but Yeah, so what, what I'm hearing is just the importance of, like, family and how fortunate we were that even though, like, you know, sometimes it looks a little different when you get to create it. And I think one of the things that was so special about the show is we created a beautiful, beautiful family. Yeah. That still holds up to this day. It definitely did. I also feel like I didn't have a lot of um, influence from women at that mm. time because I grew up with a dad and. It was very clear, like, because I would come to set and my hair would be a hot mess. <laughs> and they would be like, what we going to do with this girl's hair? But that was unfair because that wouldn't hold up now because, no, like, you got curly hair. And, I have curly hair and, and, you and had nobody knew people what to do who, yeah, with it. And that, but, and that's not your fault. That's not your fault. That goes to show, like, you know... Let's just call it what it is. White people doing white things. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's true. It is so true. It is what true. The and they didn't have somebody, at the very least, if you got somebody with curly hair, you got to know somebody how to do curly, curly hair. hair. It yeah. wasn't until, the, like, I think it was like the last season that I got finally a, a hairdresser that knew what she was doing. Was and it um, Crystal? Because I well, feel like Crystal, Crystal, Crystal was. Crystal was starting her hair journey. Like, okay. Because she was. Um, to she, I forget. Well, I think she was PA or no? She, she was, was, no, she was our PA. Yeah, she was a first team PA. But then I feel like I remember her always being like, "Girl, they gotta fix your hair. They gotta do." No, because she, she was like, yeah. "Yeah, she was advocating." Like she was the one that was av- her and Jill. Mm-hmm. They were like, "Oh my god, what? Are, like, what are we gonna do with this girl's hair? Yeah. Like, this is not okay." Because like, if you look at all of first season, my hair looks a mess, y'all. And season one, my hair looked really well, also, bad. Also, season one, we were shooting in the heat. So were, it was, and you don't just I mean it was after take after take just water being thrown on my hair and just like <laughs> blow up. Yo, it was so bad. See, but you know shit and like I guess it was really horrible but like well I think the show looks great but like we were not per like it was like we we shot that show with five dollars <laughs> straight up. <laughs> Call it what it is. We especially be let, season one. We, see that we be sitting on fuck, like that. We be sitting on because it wasn't like that season in two. In the heat, in the, <laughs> all, all hungry. Remember, <laughs> remember Jersey, bro. Oh my god. Oh my god. So if y'all don't know, okay. So in season one, the interior of the electric diner was shot in Jersey. Newark. Newark, Jersey. Newark. And Newark was hot, like real gangster at the time. It was super gangster, and it was hot in that set. It was hot, like physically hot, and it was hot like drug transactions. <laughs> like, it was like episodes of Power were happening in real life next door. Like, didn't we, weren't we like next door to a crack house? I swear to God. It was... <laughs> 
<laughs> it's true. Like, I remember. We was not next no, to a crackhead. No, yes. I, Priscilla. Priscilla, there were crackheads up and down that street all the time. Like, I remember Cory Booker at the time who wasn't even, like, he was running for something. Remember they came and announced that we were doing, like, thing. he was, like, all up in there and, like, changing Newark. And, like, I remember that was, like, a theme, you know, and that's why we were there and shooting in Newark. Oh but it was hot. Gosh. It was oh hot. You may not remember. I remember. I remember like somebody like who was clearly under the influence. I don't know what they were under the influence were like kind of like doing like like a, like um like some sort of like tap dance or like kind of just <laughs> doing the most while they were shooting because I feel like people were always shooting and like I mean, but we had a lot of that. We did. We had because our exteriors were shot um, all over Harlem. All over Harlem. All over Harlem. And that was All fun too. I, you know, I actually used to feel really bad um, because there were times because we shot in the summer, um, we would take over parks. Yeah. You know, and then it'd be like, "Sorry, y'all can't come play here. <laughs> 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 we're shooting the electric company, and we'll be like getting cursed out and like." That know. was a fun time though, because not if you're one of those kids who wanted to be in the sprinkler. <laughs> And couldn't because we were shooting a TV show. So I I oh my hated God, that. It was so hot. It was so hot. It was so hot, but it was better than the cold shots. It I'm was sorry. So hot. There were times we were shooting and it was cold. It was winter time. Yeah, but it wasn't that much. Like we didn't shoot that much in the winter. I hated um, that. And we and, they, and we didn't do a, a bunch of exteriors in the winter. I felt like they tried to take care of us. I feel I remember a couple. I remember one specifically. It might have been the Limerick one. Oh no, no, no! It was it was the one where we were at a house. What was the one? What episode was that? Josh was in it. You were in it. And, and it was at a house. We went. We went and we rented out a house somewhere. I don't even remember where it was. Well, we didn't do it. It was production. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I feel. I, I feel like I, remember, I feel like everybody was in it and like. The thing is, the show would have us doing some ridiculous stuff, but it was always in service of something good. And I yeah, think yeah, yeah. that's why, um, like, it affected it, it affected me as a creator in a sense that um, what I realized is that there isn't much separation between entertainment, education, and empowerment. Ooh. Talk, um, that talk. And it can be all three things. Yep. You know, it doesn't have to be mutually exclusive because I'm, I mean, I'm proud of the show. I'm so proud. I'm of proud it. of the show on every level. I, th- I think we're funny. I think we were super entertaining. Um, yeah. And, and it, we changed people's lives. We did, and I, and I don't take that for granted. And like, yeah, I I I step into that in everything that I do. Um, you know, I, I step into it with that intention. Yeah. What was one of the Hardest lessons you had to learn during electric company, or yeah, just like, like in life. <laughs> Both. How much time? Um, in electric company, um, that's a good question. I think the hardest thing lesson that I had to learn is that it's not about you. That's mine. Yeah, really. That's mine. Yeah. That was the hardest lesson for me. Yeah. Why you, why for you? For me, um it was a sense that um you know, I wasn't number one, two, three, four on the call sheet. I was like five or six or whatever whatever it was, um, as the pranksters and I wasn't on every single episode as, you know, the prince of like we we basically had a split track. Like there was always a, at least one or two villains, you know, so we would do every other or whatever. Um but I knew I brought something really special to the show. Um, and I think because I wasn't on every episode, I think there were moments when I felt less than, you know, like not a real part of it or not like a real star or this and this and that. Um, and I think one of the things that I started to realize that one, it's not personal. Two, um, I was a star, That's you right. know, I am sure. talented, you know, and I don't need anyone uh, like that. That wasn't defined by the number of episodes you do. That was defined by me and how I choose to show up in my work ethic and like 
what I bring to table to the table, you know, through my vessel, you yeah. know, as a talent, um, you know, and you have control over what you have control over. And I think in me kind of saying, I'm just going to do me, I'm going to focus. I ended up getting more episodes yeah. and it wasn't because I was like trying to be the best and trying to outshine everybody. I was just showing up and having fun and being cool to work with, you know, and enjoying the experience. And even though sometimes it was like a little bit of a hot mess, sometimes I enjoyed the hot mess. Yeah. Um, and I embraced it and I embraced it all. And I think, um, yeah, that was a blessing. Um, I feel that wholeheartedly because that's that was my lesson too, mm. that it wasn't about me. How'd you learn it? Because, um, like I said, I felt, I did feel a sense of tokenism a bit. Mm. Um, and just trying to like accept the fact that I was doing this and also not complaining about it and being grateful about the opportunity. Mm -hmm. But I realized that I, there was a bigger purpose to all of this, mm -hmm. that there was going to be hundreds of children, thousands mm -hmm. of children that were going to be influenced by this yeah. because of the way that you and I would show up on that camera every day when we would do when we would mm -hmm. have an episode. And so um, that was a, a big lesson for me, that it wasn't about me. It didn't matter like what I was experiencing. It didn't matter, you know what was happening with my hair it didn't matter you know if i was bullied or not it didn't matter if i was you know treated a certain like it didn't matter any of that what mattered is that i show up and did my work mm -hmm. and 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 i knew that because i did that that i was changing lives mm -hmm. um that was a lesson that i learned after the fact just so you know mm -hmm. like yeah. i didn't i couldn't i couldn't see that then yeah um well you were 12 <clears throat> yeah or whatever I, could, 13. Yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't see mm. that then um but after that, after the matter, I realized, like, wow, like, I'm so glad it went the way that it did because mm -hmm. um, it was exactly what it needed to be. Amen. And yeah. and it was exactly what I needed as well. Mm -hmm. um, so that that was really a great, a great lesson mm -hmm. for me. You know, something that you said, like, really struck me. Um, gratitude and being grateful for the experience. Like, I, I you know have been on this journey, you know, in just being able to understand and be grateful for every step of the journey. I mean, I literally fucking have a thank you tattooed on my body, mm -hmm. you know, as a reminder to be grateful. And also knowing that sometimes as people of color in mm -hmm. predominantly white spaces, yep, you know, we're taught to, oh, you should just be grateful that you have. have and it's like, yeah. and I think there's sometimes we have to be aware of you can still be grateful for an opportunity yep. and know that you are worthy of more. Of more. And that certain people can't play gratitude as like, yes, I am very grateful and you still need to pay me more yeah. and you still need to treat me like I deserve to be treated. And I think that's one of the things that for me, um, is so important, you know, as an artist, because I feel like sometimes the the word, oh, you should just be grateful, gets thrown around a lot. And it's just like, I am very grateful. I'm very grateful in all things. Yeah. And I'm also, know and recognize what I bring to the table and know that you should be grateful to me and for Absolutely. having me and to be able, because the thing is, we created that show together and like Absolutely. we continue to like, you know, educate and inspire and I, it just i mean that just struck me and just like i feel like correct me if i'm wrong there was like when you talk about um tokenism or whatever it's just like i don't i don't, I don't know if they realize what they had sometimes mm, really i mean in general yeah, yeah absolutely we were we were fierce you know we were ahead of our time you know uh, maybe we didn't realize what we had, but looking back on it, like, I'm so proud of all of us, you know? I mean, look at what you're doing now. I mean, you everything that you do, you know, you conquer, you know? And this is still, like, it's the beginning of the journey for all of us, regardless of how many years we've been alive. But, like, yeah. whether or not, like, people have continued in, in, in the arts and entertainment or 
whether they're just like amazing human beings and souls is like I can look back on all of us and just you know be proud of the the people that we are and and the work that we've done you know in and the this, arts and yeah what, I, and, and like, I don't mean to interrupt yeah, you but no, I just good. remembered one thing also that kind of yeah. bugged me <laughs> <laughs> I'm all on my positive vibe it's like girl you know but, what happened what but it's you? goodish yeah. right I, I mean that's, that's um I did feel like there was I, I had a very thick accent like did a, you oh my gosh oh yeah you from Harlem Peace I was from Harlem. Harlem. I had a very thick accent, and um, I was told a lot mm -hmm. by producers on how I'm supposed to articulate and that's, things, yeah. and that bothered me a lot. Yeah, as as well as it should. Um, you know, I talk about this all the time in regards to acting and the theater, specifically acting school. You know, I... Um, you know, I went to NYU um, back in 1400 BC. <laughs> you know, and I think you know, 1400 BC. 1400. It's been a while, girl. <laughs> um, and I think one of the things that they did, I mean, they used to come at me all the time for how I spoke. Um, and I think one of the things that they try to do that isn't healthy, specifically, um, you know, for you know non-white students is like i feel like they try to strip you and i feel like they try to strip you they of do. all that kind of makes you beautiful and one of the things that i realized when i got out of school is that you know they try to bring you to this place of neutrality and this but nobody wants to see neutral you know no. what i'm saying neutral is not real you know and while there is some value in it and being able to try to play anything it's just like Nobody was trying to cast me as like Richard the Third, you know what I'm saying? I went and I did Law and Order SVU four times, and I did, you know, whatever. Right. Um, and I'm not saying that like what I'm saying is psychologically, there's an element in that way of being is that you are not good enough. Well, how you That's present how isn't felt. good enough. How you talk isn't good enough. What you look, and I think what that does is. Um, it takes so much time to unlearn that and to recognize that I am beautiful. I am smart. I am worthy. How I talk is beautiful. How I look is beautiful. My hair is beautiful. You know, my body, big or small, whatever, in whatever formation it may present that day is beautiful. And I think um, society fucks with us. I think the entertainment industry can do that as well. You know, producers who don't necessarily come with that, you know, um, intention does that because what is that like to feel that at, you know, 10 years old, 11 years old, you know? It was, and that's the reason why that lesson that I had was so yeah. important to learn because a lot of the time I did feel unworthy mm -hmm. and I felt like I didn't belong and I felt, um, dumb mm -hmm. a lot. I felt really stupid. Um, and, it was annoying because mm -hmm. I remember I would go into the studio to do whatever tracks that they had. And I remember this one specifically because it was the first one, which was the theme song. Uh... And um, I think Lynn was in the studio for really? that one. Or no, it was Chris. I mean, Chris was, yeah, he did. I think the it was Chris. It, yeah. I think it was Chris. And <laughs> it was funny because I go in and they're like, all right, P, you remember you, you learned that? I was like, yeah, I got this. Let's go. And he started the track, and I'm like, yo, 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 the power we perfected. <laughs> they was like, who is this grown ass man? They're like, why is ODB? <laughs> power we perfected is electrically connected, so use it as directed. I was going in, like real Harlem, and then they stopped. Chris goes, that was great. I'm going to need you to tone Harlem down for a bit. Well, you also, but and I just was to be fair, super... but you also, I mean, you were a street rapper and a club <laughs> was, rapper and not get up. So, so like, and so that when I did the, yeah, yeah, that was like the, like per the perfect marriage I could find to keep, you know, P-Star alive, but also like this new like character that I was yeah. playing, which was this electric, you know, Jessica Ruiz, right? Yeah. And so 
And at first that was fun, but it began to be when I was doing scripts and I was, you know, doing um, lines or whatever, like it was just really hard. And I felt like I had to talk a certain way. I remember that. I remember that. Oh my that. God. Yeah. I remember this and that. this and that. And I'm like, and then, this? Right. And then I would get made fun of because yeah. I would do that. So they were like, why do you talk like that? Mm. And I'll be like, well, I'm trying to talk. No, but that's not how you talk. Mm. And it was always this like. Yeah. Yeah. And that's unfortunate. <sighs> and that's, you know, no. No body should be made to feel that way, but specifically no child. And I think that's one of the the rough things about being as young as you were, you know. Yeah. Um, and not having protection, you know what I'm saying? Like I think, like. <laughs> I'm glad you just said that. I mean, I, I don't. I, I, it, it was. Yeah, it was. You know, and I don't. You know, it's just one of those things. But, you know. I think sometimes you have to to realize like like there were situations that happened in life that you know you didn't have control over, yeah, because you were a young person, and you know, um yeah, yeah, so greatest lesson in life, oh child i I've lived a lot of life, <laughs> I've lived a lot of life, um. Uh, greatest lesson I've ever learned in life. Um, you're the gift. Mm. I think um, you, um, once you've kind of learned how to shake away all that shit, and I'm not saying that it takes two days or or 30 years or whatever. I feel like we're all kind of in process of that. I think um, there is no other Priscilla Diaz on this earth. There's no mm -hmm. other Dominic Cologne on this earth. And I think once you allow yourself to um, trust yourself and stop investing in the negative narratives that we kind of choose to create because the reality is you know when you talk about oh being stupid or this or that that was not true yeah you know what i'm saying yes those feelings were valid but that wasn't the reality the reality was you were a lead on a television show yeah. that taught so many young people so many people who you know did not speak English, learn how to read yeah, and speak yeah, English. Yeah. Like, that is true. You, at a very early age, you were a teacher, you were a role model, you were inspiration. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that in and of itself is a gift. And, you know, you had this, you know, rich story, you know, that um, where you learn resilience, you know, where you learn how to break through um and now you're providing a space where others can continue to do the same. That's a gift. You right. know what I'm saying? That's what I've come to know is that, um, you know, even in the darkest of moments that I experienced throughout life, you know, all of those moments created who I am today. Right, right, right. You know, so wherever I show up, I show up fully mm. as Dominic Cologne. That's right. You know, and I love myself. Oh, you know, and yes. I think being able to to know that I'm a gift, I'm a gift to this world, I'm a gift to every space that I step into, that I have a right to share my voice, to share my art, to share um, who I am, you know, and I don't have to apologize for that, you know, um, you know, and by doing that, you give that gift of yourself, but you also liberate others. Yes. And I think that's beautiful. And I think, you know, cheers to that. Cheers to that. <laughs> Are you supposed to cheers to water? Fuck it. It's alcohol. No, it's not. I wish. It's just water. Imagine if this was alcohol. We'd be spilling tea. We would spill it. Mad no. tea. Imagine. I already spilled tea. Yeah. <laughs> like, we, I think I, I'm proud of this conversation. I I'm proud too. of you. Oh, thank you, honey. You know, what? good girl gone goodish, bad girl gone goodish. <laughs> I got to get the branding right. What is it? 
Bad girl gone good. Bad girl gone good ish. Yeah, I'm saying. Well, thank you for joining. This We're done great. already. We are done. That was this like is... ten minutes. No, it's eleven fifteen. Wow. All right. Um. Well, thank you for having me. Um, <laughs> no, I'm so proud to be. I'm proud of you. Thank you. I'm proud of the woman you are. I'm proud of the mother you are. I'm, I'm proud, proud of, of you. Artist. I'm proud of you, and I love you so I love much you. because you definitely you have a special place in my heart in in the way that you've sort of mentored me throughout mm. life and you've seen lots of parts of me um some of which no one else has ever seen mm. before so and you still love me always <laughs> always you make me wanna dance now go on clap your hands you so stupid my <laughs> name is pete Stoll. get off my podcast you were hilarious <laughs> pete stalgo so down, let me see your matrix. So <laughs> down, let me see your matrix. So down, let me see your matrix. No shade. I was not in the video. You should have had me in the video. That's my one gripe. I was not in the Make You Wanna Dance video. You owe me a video track. Your next video got to be in it. Wait, but did I? Oh, I didn't know you. Yeah, yeah I didn't know you. Yeah. I would have cost too much. I really... You probably would have. <laughs> you probably would have. Fun fact about that. Um... There was this little boy who was in the Wanna Make You Dance video mm -hmm. who ended up being in the in the Heights movie. Really? That played Graffiti Pete. Oh wow. He was in the Wanna Make okay, You yeah, Dance video. Okay, yeah, no, he's a great video. Boy. Uh I wanna say it's Noah. His Noah. Noah, yeah. Noah, that's his name. Yeah. Small world. Uh -huh. Look at that. Well mm -hmm. he was in the video. I wasn't in the video. I was Manny Spat Bodie. Yeah. I wasn't Peace Star Rising though for like a hot second in the back. You was in Peace yeah, Star Rising. Was, yeah. So Yo, where's my residual? <laughs> where's all, all our residuals? Words. First come, of all, come through. That's come that's through. part two. Residuals. Electric company residuals. Facts. Shade. Listen. All right. Let's positive. <laughs> no, it's, it, it's positive. This was positive, and you owe us money. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the end of the podcast. Right. Thanks for coming, y'all. And uh, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share, and comment. Pass Bye, y'all. Bye. <laughs>